So, if you've attended one of my one-off beginner workshops in Tai Chi, or maybe Tai Chi for personal trainers, I will have made an effort to focus on five or six techniques at least, which work well as a kind of standalone practice. If you can attend ongoing classes, we tend to run through longer forms and more complicated coordinations. But these techniques, which I am going to offer you a refresher in, they're really useful in and of themselves. You can use them as part of a warm-up or a cool-down after weightlifting or other sorts of training. I often use them with myself or with my clients. If you're doing high-intensity work and you just leave the gym, it can be a bit abrupt. But these techniques can help settle the mind and calm the body again and sort of usher you back out into the real world. It's all the real world, but you know. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video and you find the refresher useful. I was going to change my outfit, but then I thought I don't need to. You don't need special equipment for Tai Chi, you don't need to be anywhere in particular. I'm wearing old desert boots and cargo shorts, so you can really make it work for you wherever you are, is the idea. But we'll start with the begin form movement, which happens at the beginning of the form generally. So we assume we start with the feet together, left step, and then we're lifting the hands up to the front, about shoulder height and sinking down, bending the legs as we press the hands down in front of the hips. Continuing that movement, lifting up and pressing down. And it often exists at the beginning of a form, partially I think because it's a really good exercise for bringing the body and the mind into alignment. And a lot of Tai Chi, the point is harmonizing the body and mind via the breath. And I think that's a really good way to think about it. If we talk about Qi, sometimes it can be a bit esoteric, a bit inaccessible. But if you think that Qi is actually the Chinese word for breath, if you imagine using the breath to harmonize the body and mind, that's not quite as foreign a concept. You can get your head around that. So, enough talk. Focusing on the breath. When you press down, breathing out. When you lift up, breathing in. Out. Always think of trying to soften. Soften the knees, soften the hips, soften the joints in the arms. And that's important as well. If you get any knee pain, when you're sitting back and down, you don't want to just bend the knees. If you bend the knees without thinking much about the hips, you'll come forward, the weight will come forward into the toes. You can get pressure in the knees. So instead, if you know you have knees you need to look after, stand a little bit wider and pay particular attention as you're sinking down, that you're bending down into the hips. So the body weight is back, it's not too far forward, but it's even on the feet and then you're sharing the load between the quads and the buttocks. And so this is the position you'll find you're in for any Tai Chi technique, where the feet are parallel, you're sinking down through the hips. From this position you can move a little bit side to side, there's that softness in the legs. The next technique leads on quite nicely from the begin form movement. You have the hands beside the hips, lift one hand up onto the top, the other hand turns underneath as if you're holding a large ball. Now this exercise is mostly in turning the waist. We turn to the one side, turn the hand, so we swap, other hands on top, and turning back. Usually when we practice, it's as if you're leading with this elbow. The top elbow draws the body across, and when you've gone as far as the waist will turn, the hand here takes over that movement and we continue. So you turn the waist, then the hands change, turn the waist, and then the hands change. If you're just to practice one arm, you'll roll through. You can try that a little bit. At this side, roll up. At this side, roll down and under. But it will feel better, more harmonious. 
when you're using both hands together. And from the side, you'll notice we turn, changing, and coming back across. So you can see the top hand continuing that momentum, rolling underneath, and then changing to come back. For our purposes, we're focusing specifically on just turning through the waist. But this movement also works, it's kind of a transitional movement with a lot of other movements. If you're practicing the part wild horse main movement, we often find we use that sort of movement through the waist, holding the ball as a transition technique. But that's all topics for another time. The hold post technique, also sometimes called the Tai Chi stance, it's one of my favourites. You can just do this a lot by itself. And it's static. You're sinking down into that comfortable stance position, soften the knees, soften the hips, and the hands are facing each other in front of the chest. And from here you just breathe. It's a standing meditation. You can relax the gaze, try to relax the wrists, elbows and shoulders, everything's dropping down. If you get a bit tired, you can have the hands facing the lower stomach again, that'll work. But otherwise, in front of the sternum. And while you're here, you're just trying to sink the breath down into the lower stomach. 36 is kind of a special number in Tai Chi and Qigong practice. And so they'll often say you should hold this for 36 breaths. The idea is if you do something a couple of times, you'll get a couple of repetitions in but you won't really have a feel for it. You won't get the technique into your body unless you've done it 36 times. Now, what you can do as well is you can link the begin forms and the waist turn into this technique and you can create something of a little bit of a meditation circuit, if you will. Circuit training isn't, doesn't sound meditative, but you can begin with a few of these ones, lifting up, pressing down. You can do nine times. Then you can turn, transition into the waist turn movements. You could do this about nine times as well. And after you've done them, you can transition into the standing meditation. So you turn, lift both hands, and back to the center. And then hold for 18 breaths. So you've done a total of 36 breaths or 36 techniques as it were. If you want to practice more, of course, you can do 36 begin form movements, 36 turning of the waists, and then back to the center for 36 breaths. When you finish, press the hands down in front, or you can bring the hands down on the last exhalation to the lower stomach, and just take a few deep breaths, breathing into the lower stomach in this position as well. So that creates a nice little sequence if you want to train in a sequence otherwise you can do the technique separately just as happily the tai chi walk is a great technique for mobility and strength for the legs if you struggle with regular walking lunges they feel a little bit funny you can use this one it's much softer but it also requires a great deal of control and it teaches you balance and strength so we'll start in the bow stance and you can just focus on rocking the weight a little bit back and forwards softly with the knees to draw the weight from side to side. You're not pushing yourself forwards and backwards. And you'll notice the knee is mostly over the toe and on the back leg, the knee isn't collapsing inwards. You wanna keep the knee facing the same direction as the toe as well. If you like, you can move the weight back even more and lift the toe and forwards. Lift the toe, you'll sink even more into that hip. And then when it comes to walking, open the foot, four to five degrees, step through, open, back, open, and step through. So if you've got a lot of space, you can walk lunge a long way. So as we're stepping forwards, we turn the front foot out, about 45 degrees, move the weight, step through. If you want to turn in though, turn the foot, then we're facing front and we've turned around, pivot and we're back in the bow stance. A couple of steps again. Moving the weight softly, 
that being through, back, turn the toe in, reposition the foot, keep it on the supporting foot, and continue the step. Take notice as well, you move the weight and we're just lifting the foot up and then stepping through and placing the foot gently. If you're falling forwards or if you find you have to kick off, then you're probably trying to go a little bit too wide, you're trying to go too low. But that's where often a lot of the balance work comes in, of course. You move the weight all the way over one foot, gently lift the other, step through. So a lot of it is really happening on one leg rather than it being sort of two-legged exercise. The next technique is called cloud hands but it's not strictly from the Yang family Tai Chi lineage. It comes from the Canon Fist, which is related, but kind of different. But the version, I, I like incorporating this into the Tai Chi practice because it's a good reinterpretation of some of the other techniques and it's great for the shoulders. It's a really good warm up for the shoulders and the back. You come onto a kind of a high horse stance. So we'll go a little bit wider than normal and often is the case with a Tai Chi stance. Bring both palms up, sides to waist, and we're reaching one hand forwards. Always keep the palm up, facing towards the sky. Then back through the waist. Lead with the fingertips, coming back, out to the side, overhead, and back to the waist. With the other side forwards, out to the side, back, overhead, twisting through the waist, and back. Reaching, leading with the fingertips, overhead, and back to the waist. And here I'm being a little conservative with the movement. I can reach a lot further and try twisting through the back and really extending through the shoulder. Or you can keep it a little bit smaller and you can just treat it as a bit of an arm shoulder warm up. Um, that's when you really want to adjust depending on your body. If there's any particularly inflexible or jammed body parts, this will expose them. So you want to treat them with care and see if over time you can work through them a little bit, but you're not trying to force it. So palms coming back to the waist, bending forwards, out to the side, overhead and turning back through the waist, back, If you want to harmonize with the breath, you can. For this one, you time it so that when you're reaching forwards, you're breathing out. And if you're doing it very slowly, you'll have a few breaths, but if you're doing it quickly, it might only be one breath. So you can play with that a bit yourself. But it'll mean breathing out, rolling all the way around, and breathing out again here. Then we come back, you'll be breathing in, and then breathe out as you push forward with the other hand. Breathe in. Breathe out, in, boom, 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 back through, and out. Or of course, if it's going more slowly, you might breathe out, breathe in, breathe out again as you stretch overhead, breathe in, as you come behind, and breathe out as you bring the hand forward, in, out, in, and out projecting the other hand forward. Usually just in and out through the nose, but I'm exaggerating a little bit. And this is from a Qigong system. It's a great exercise for stretching the body. It's something I like doing often at the end of a workout, a lot of my clients like doing it. Um, it's a really good one for just sort of bringing, settling everything and helping the body to recover. Start with the hands on the lower stomach. 
draw across to support the lower back, stretch the chest up, then leaning forwards, forwards with the chest, and then down, run the hands on the back to the left, come to the front, bringing the hands along the inside or front of the legs, and closing. Again, opening, supporting the lower back, stretch the chest up, lean forwards, and then down, run the hands along the back to the legs, come to the front, all the way up, and close. So there's a couple of points you'll want to pay attention to. We're supporting the lower back with the hands, and we're not leaning back, we're leaning the chest up, and once you've extended the chest up, you can choose to lean back if you like, but you're already getting that sense of elongating through the front of the body, so you don't need to. So the hands are supporting the lower back, lift the chest up, elongating the back, and then if it's comfortable, you can lean back, but you're not just collapsing the lower back, you're extending. If it's more comfortable for the shoulders, you can use the back of the hands. Extend the chest up, leaning back, then coming forwards with the chest, turning the hands and running down. It's also key that you're coming forwards with the chest because then you're not just crunching down into a stretch. You're actually elongating from the hips. You'll notice from here, my back is extended and as I lean forward, my back hasn't really moved yet. I'm just moving from the hips. And then as I come down, that's where the back starts to move. You don't want to be getting a strong stretch in the tendons behind the back of the knee. You want the stretch to be in the belly of the thigh behind the hamstring. So in order to achieve that, you may find you need to bend the legs a little bit. And as you run down, you should feel the work in the hamstrings there rather than behind the knee. Also, if you're a little bit less flexible, you can stand wider. Wider feet will be a little bit easier, or you can challenge yourself with narrower feet if you like.